Praise God. Paradise. Amen. You know, Jesus said to the thief on the cross who repented and said, Remember me, Lord. He said, This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Paradise. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. People talk about going to hot, hot, hot water. know how to say that for me. Praise God. Why? My old country boy said something about Hawaii and the fellow said, I'm just fine now, you. <laughs> so, but it's a beautiful paradise that they only had and got to go there, but one day I will. Amen. One day we'll take that uh, plain air ride, make a circle of earth time to do a few things. She don't know. Praise God, who knows? But a plain air ride, that's what we're going to take. The Bible says we're going to all be going to call it to be with the Lord. So it's going to ever be with the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I want to pray over the offer and ask God to bless you, bring it back to you. Father, we do love you. We praise you. Thank you, God, for faithful people that sow tithe and obedient to the word of God. God, your word says, it's not something I thought of, but your word has declared that you'll open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that they wouldn't be able to receive. God, do bless, meet every need, bless and touch lives, save souls. God, we're, we're nearing the end of time. We're nearing the time Jesus is coming. Lord, we want to be used as a soul better. God, let our church be a soul better. Jesus' name, we pray your blessings on everything that's given today. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Don't say one more. Get one more to sing. And then Wes is going to come and minister that song about the power of prayer. Amen. And then Jason's got the word for us today. Well, as I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary. So 
some to see someone down on their knees talking to the end words lost on the breeze some to see teardrops falling to the floor just a waste of time not a
to my house. He's not living there anymore, but he has a key to my house. And he has access, because of relationship, he has access to walk right into my house. And do you know he walked in and got the refrigerators and just got a bunch of food in there that, that I thought I might, was going to eat. You know, but when I got there, I realized that somebody had come in and totally uh, ransacked the place, so to speak. He didn't do that, but the food was gone, and I thought, hmm, somebody's been here today. But, uh, and I've done that at my father's house. I've done the exact same thing because I have access. Listen, you and I, we have access. Man, you have access. You're not just beating the air when you pray for your mother. You're not just beating the ground and tears are being wasted. But we're going before the God of this universe. That when there was none, and man, he spoke the word and everything that we see, everything that we experience and the life that we live, it all came from him in just a moment when he said, let there be. Wow, there it was. And man, that's who you're talking to. Praise God. So go with confidence. Go with the strength. Go with the assurance. Amen. That God hears you when you pray. Amen. Because he does. Praise the Lord. Amen. So good to see you here today. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want to ask you just to turn, stand with me and turn to the, go with me. Let's go to, uh, let's go to the book of John. I tell you what, back up there a little bit. Go with, let's go to Matthew first this morning. Matthew chapter 20. And I believe it's verse 28. Verse 28, there everybody with me. Everybody with me. Got on the if you don't have it, you can look up there and read it. Matthew 20, verse 28 says, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. I want to talk to you this morning for the next few moments just to just about our service. In 2019, we're still in the first month of this year and, and we're making headway to the direction and, and the way that, uh, that we want to go. We're thinking of some things and some maybe some new ideas. Maybe we want to, uh, so to speak, turn over a new leaf this year. I mean, how many wants to have the best 2019 you've ever, this, this be the best year of your life? I mean, all the way around, just spiritually, physically, emotionally, I want 2019 to be the best year of my life. I want to see great things take place in your family's life and in my family's life. And I want to see more souls brought into the kingdom of God this year than ever before. Praise God. You, you believe that that can happen? And you're a part of it. And it's going to depend on our service and how we serve. One way, uh, I don't know if it's Brother Cummings, how many remembers Brother Michael Cummings used to uh, pass over greater love? He used to come here and he would uh, minister to us, some great, great friend of ours, and just, uh, just a great, uh, just a great man of God. We just love him. But their motto at their church was simply this: to grow, go, and glow. <laughs> to grow, go, and glow. And I want, I want us, Amen, to begin to glow. And we need to glow. Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works, the Bible says, and glorify our Father which is in heaven. And then would you just stretch your hand and pray and ask God that he would speak to us this morning. Father, we come before you today. We love you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you, God, for a clear, a clear command that you've given us. Amen. To go into all the world 
and to preach this good news that you've given us. The good news that we've heard. We're thankful that we've heard it, God. We want to go share it with others. We just pray, God, that you would breathe upon us. God, a breathe, just like our pastor said a couple weeks ago, there's going to be a fresh anointing. A fresh anointing. God, to go forth and to be the people that you call us to be. And God, we'll give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. And as you see, they turn to that one beside of you and bless them real good. Amen. Tell them you love them. Amen. That the best is yet to come. Amen. Say that to them. Say, hey, the best is yet to come. Amen. Mike, the best is yet to come. Praise God. I don't know how good 2018 was. Praise the Lord. It was pretty good in my house. Man, got a brand new grandbaby. Oh, we're so tickled, and he's, man, you ought to see pictures. That, that rascal, he's fat enough like you wouldn't believe. Hey, man, just getting up. He's growing. Man, it's important to grow. We're so thankful and just excited, but I know that this coming year, that it's going to be an awesome year. It's going to be an awesome year. And then the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, we're celebrating this week. Uh, this is Martin Luther King. Some of you will maybe get to be on vacation tomorrow, maybe get the day off. I guess the banks will be closed and the mailman probably will not run to your house tomorrow. And so you don't have to worry about getting any bills or checks. Amen. So I'm glad to not see bills. But I'd like for him to bring the checks, wouldn't you? Praise God. But Martin Luther King, he, he, he made some statements. I just wanted to share some things that uh, one of his quotes, and he said, he said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Another quote by him said, everybody can be great. Say everybody. Everybody, everybody can be great. How many wants to be great? Yeah. About six or seven of them. Yeah. Everybody wants to be great? Yeah. Now, let me get 100% participation here. Man, today. We all want to be great. And we all want to be great. I want to be great. Everybody can be great. Here's what he says, because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. Praise God. We can all be great. If you want to be great, if you want 2019 to be great, I believe that it can be, but I believe the only way it can be depends on how you decide to serve other people. When you decide to serve others, I mean, you get the mind of Christ. If you want to be Christ-like, that's what Christ came to this earth. He made a choice. He, he was, listen, he's the, he's the son of God. He was all 100% God, 100% man. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And then the Bible teaches us that he laid that aside. And he came to this earth not to be served, but to serve humanity. To give his life a ransom for you and for me. Our example today simply is this. I want you to remember this point. is simply service over status. That was Jesus' example to us. His status was like no other. Never a man spake like this man. And he, he was the he was the man, Jesus Christ, you just think about it, only lived 33 years on this earth. You talk about influence. You talk about a man that uh, the world's tried its best to rid itself of. 
You know, they've tried, tried his best to push him out of the way, to push him aside, to just say he was just a good man. He just was someone that did some good things. He was a prophet. He lived here on this earth for a little while. He taught well. He did some nice things for the 33 years that he lived. But there was there's something more about him than just that. Because there's a lot of people that did that. There's a lot of people that lived a lot longer than that. Really, the only thing, here's something else amazing about him, is that what he did in a span, he did it in a span of three years. This man lived, in a, he lived for 33 years, but his ministry was for three years. And the Bible says that if books were written, what he did during that time span, that all the libraries in the world couldn't hold the books of the things he did while he was here. I'm telling you, that's pretty amazing. We've known some really good people that have done some great things. Amen. But I don't know if you can say that about him. I mean, this is an awesome man. So he had, his status is far and above. He is the king of kings. He is the great I am. He is the door. He said, I am that I am. He's, his status is above all. But he's put aside his status. Amen. And decided to serve. John 13, he came and he was coming before his disciples. And this statement that he made is that he brought before them and he said, listen, here's what's amazing about this. And this is why I feel like this is so important in our lives as Christians is that at the point in time in his life, he was nearing the end of his ministry. He knew what was coming. He knew what was next. He knew that the Garden of Gethsemane was coming up. He knew also that he would be arrested. He knew that he was going to be brought before uh, Pilate. And he was going to be condemned to a crucifixion. And he understood about that. He knew what that consisted of. He knew that he was going to be beaten and, and whipped and, and abused. And no doubt the pain that would be involved in all that. He knew all of that was coming. And he got with a group of men that he had ministered to and he had mentored for the last three years. And he was coming before them and he said, here's what I want to show you. If I can leave you with one thing, Barbara, if I can leave you with just this one thing. This is just like, just understanding that as a father to your family, you know you're fixing to leave this world. And you're thinking, what, what's one thing? If I could have one thing that I could give my family before I leave this earth, what, what would I want to tell them? What would I want to say to him? And that's what Jesus is doing here. And so he brings out a basin of water. And he takes a towel. And he robes himself with that towel. And he begins to wash their feet. And he begins to talk about servanthood. He begins to tell them about, listen, listen, the only thing that's going to make a difference in this world. The way that this world is going to know that you're my disciples. It's the love that you have one toward another. By loving one another. By serving one another. That's what's going to be the difference maker. Not how much Bible you read. Not how many times you showed up to Sunday school class and, and medals that you've gotten and trophies over the years of, of memory and Bible scriptures and the Ten Commandments and all the books of the Bible, which all of that's great. Not putting any of that down, but I'm just saying this thing, it's not going to be that that makes a difference. He said, what's going to make a difference? What's going to make the greatest difference is the love that you have one toward another. Serving one another. Preferring one another over you. Getting up in the morning and, and starting your day. If you're married and you, you live in a home with your spouse. And, and it's, it's not about, honey, what can you do for me today? But it becomes a point to say, honey, how can I serve you today? How can I make your life a little easier today? What can I do for you today that, to, that, to, that will make, make, your, make things easier for you? Make things better for you? Go to work, people you work with. How can I serve you today? How can I be a blessing in your life? How can I lighten your load? Man, living with a life of servanthood, wanting to serve people. 
We're, we've got a ministry going on in Johnson City right now. Richard and Dale and Carol and Leslie and all the others that are helping and being involved with that. What an opportunity that is to serve people. To share the love of God through service. When, when we have people that come into the church in 2019, we, we want to have a church that has an atmosphere of encouragement, that has an atmosphere of a welcoming atmosphere that just says, hey, we love you and we're here to serve you. How can we serve you? What can we do for you? And what can we, uh, how can we, so to speak, wash your feet and make your life better? Man, because that's what we're here to do. We're here to serve and to help other people. Service over status. The second point I want you to remember today is this. Service over convenience. This is a big one that's, that hits home with me and, and just pierces me right in the heart. You know, and that's what I, I, I asked the Lord I was praying this morning about this message. And I just said, you know, here, here's the way, um, the only way I'm going to share this with you is just, uh, I need this more than any of you all need this. So I, I'm asking you just to bear with me, if, if you would, just for a little while and let me preach this message uh, to myself. And if it encourages you, if it helps you in any way, that's good. But if God's dealing with me about something and, and places something on my heart, I feel like maybe me sharing that with you, and that He's probably doing the same thing in some of your lives. And so I'm just praying, just, I'm not pointing fingers today, because if I did, I've got a whole bunch pointing back at me. So don't, please don't take me like, I, like I'm doing that today. I, I just want us all to understand that we're here Amen to serve. And in Luke chapter 10, verse 30 through 37, we're going to read this story real quick. It's just a few, few verses, but let's read that. It says, Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, he wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road. I would consider that, if you sit read that in the Bible, you read that now, you understand, that's probably religious people today, right? So the religious people of that day came down the road, and when they, when they saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levi was also to be a religious person. When he arrived at the place, he came and looked and he passed by on the other side. Knowing that these people were religious, and I know you and I can relate to all of this because how many times have we seen someone, I've seen someone in need, someone maybe has come to me and even said to me, hey, I've got this going on right now. I'm having a hard time. And you're, I'm in the middle. I'm, I've got, I'm, I'm at work and I've got things going on and, and I'm, I'm busy and, and life is moving pretty fast. And I don't see them, you know, just pat them on the back and go, hey, I'll be praying for you. I'll be praying for you. You know, here's my number, whatever. Let me have your number. I'll call you back, whatever it is, but I've got to keep moving. And that's what the religious people did in this story. They just simply, uh, they saw it, but they said, I'm on my way to Jericho. I've got a job to do. I've got something going on. I don't have time to fool with you right now, so I'm going to lay a blessing on you. You see somebody on the road, you know, holding the sign up, whatever, and you just kind of go, Lord, bless them today, Jesus. Send them somebody to give them a five dollar bill, Big Mac, whatever it may be, Let it, and you know the whole time God's saying, I sent you this way today. You're the one supposed to be bringing the Big Mac or the five dollars or whatever it is. Amen. You're there. You're there at that moment. Amen. Don't just pass them by. Don't just say I'll pray for you. Don't just do but Just stop for a moment. Amen. And serve other people. Help other people. Encourage other people. You say, well, people are just doing that to make money. They're swindling one. Hey, that's between them and God. That's between them and God. Quit, quit trying to judge every situation. Yes, we're supposed to be good stewards. Yes, we're supposed to uh, 
are not enabled people. We're all these things are, that we all know that. But the, our heart must be careful not to turn so cynical and so mean hearted that we forget the reason why we're here. And we're here to show and to share the love of Jesus Christ. So, but a certain man, keep continue reading there, but a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. Compassion. Lord, anoint us and baptize us afresh and anew with compassion. We need compassion. We need to... You remember what it was like when you first got saved. You remember when, when, when God first touched your heart and how things were just... He, he took out of a kingdom of darkness and He brought you into a kingdom of light and they placed so much love on the inside of your heart. It was amazing and you couldn't wait. You were so excited about what God had done for your life and you were just wanting to share with others and share all that had a heart of compassion thinking, how could God forgive me? The type of person that I was, how could He forgive me? But He did. He loved you. You forgave you. Your heart was full of compassion for other people. Amen. Lord, help us to have compassion. Help us to be compassionate. Amen. To have the greatest year in 2019, I believe we're going to have to resurrect, amen, that spirit of compassion in our lives for other people. This world is hurting and it needs, amen, for us. We have the answer. We have what people are looking for. Let's share it with them. Let's give it to them. Evangelism, one, one writer says, is just another beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. Man, that's what evangelism is. It's just that simple. It's just so simple. Just saying that people, you can tell, and they'll still tell you all the time. They'll, they'll say things to you, and you, you'll pick up on it if you'll, just, if you'll quiet your mind just a little bit and just think, how can I have compassion today? And they'll say things to you, and you'll be able to stop them and just say, hey, listen, God loves you. God cares. God cares about you. God, God's got a plan for your life. God, there's a purpose that you're here. God wants to use you. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what you've had to experience up to this point. But I want you to know that God knows and God cares. Yes, he does. But this man, as he was, as he journeyed, he came to where he was and he had compassion. So he went to him, bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and he set him on his own hand. And brought him to an end and took care of him. And on the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii. He gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, Take care of him. And whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these do you think was a neighbor, was a neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he, and he said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. This man, think about the Samaritan man, he didn't ask no questions. He didn't say, Hey, how did this happen to you? What world was you up to? How many drugs have you taken today? How, what, what, what have you been, you know, how, what, what's going on? How much alcohol have you been drinking today? What, uh, what's the whole deal? What's going on in your life? He didn't ask those questions. He saw a hurting individual. He stepped in. He helped him. It was definitely inconvenient. Let me tell you something. Helping people and serving people is not going to be convenient. You will be inconvenienced. It will take your time. You will have to stop what you're doing. You will maybe have to sacrifice something that you had planned to do. Amen. But it will be worth it. It'll be worth it to help someone else. Story of how many of you heard of uh, Matthew Barnett, the Dream Center in Los Angeles. 
We, uh, a few years back, it's been eight, probably ten, ten years ago now, probably that, that far back, we were fortunate enough to go to a, a youth conference, a forward youth conference, Jensen Franklin. We took the young people of that time, they're, those young people were old people now. <laughs> Amen. But, uh, but they were young then, and we, and we got to go to the conference. He was one of the speakers at that conference. And the story that he has is amazing because he just decided in his heart, he didn't have a dime, and he decided that Los Angeles, God had placed on his heart the people in Los Angeles, the, the, the ignored, the looked over, the drug addicts, the homeless, all those different things. He got the heart for those people, and he wanted to help them some way. And so he just simply, he went out and he set up a desk on the sidewalk, just a young, young man, just a very young man at this time. This has probably been 20 years ago when this happened. He, he placed a desk on the sidewalk, fixed it up just like he had, a, had an office out there. And he set that desk there and he sat down. I, I, don't know, I don't know about a telephone, probably didn't have a phone hooked up, but he had a little file cabinet there and some folders and different things where he could keep some papers in. And he could sit there at that desk. And people, of course, out of curiosity, come up and say, Dude, what are you doing here? And he said, this is my office. I'm here to help those that need help, those that are hurting. Is there anything I can do for you? Anything I can help you with? People will start saying, well, I need this, and, I, and I'm, I, I need food, I need whatever. And he wrote their name down, he gave their information, put it in a file, and he said, okay, I, I'll be right here. I'm going to get some things lined up, get involved, and we'll get you some help. And now, and then the Dream Center in Los Angeles, some dessert abandoned hospital that they were able to purchase. They've got this big, huge, high-rise hospital over there, and it is helping and ministering and touching and changing people's lives day in and day out. Amen. Because he was willing to serve. He was willing to take initiative and just say, hey, I don't know what I can do. I don't have any money, but I've got a heart for people. I want to help somebody. With that, you see what happens from there. He began to serve other people. The third thing is service to others is serving Jesus. How many of us would like to feel closer to God in 2019? How many times have we all said that? You know, we all tested on the service and prayer requests. I just, you know, I just want to be closer to God this year. I said, a lot of people pray that, ask that prayer. I want to be closer to God. I want the, my love for God to increase. I want depression, amen, to leave my life. I, whatever, uh, I, I just, I have lack of energy and I feel in a, like I'm in a dark place. I feel lost right now. I feel far away from God. I don't know what to do to get me out of this old moly grub mess that I'm in. But I just feel like I'm in a, in a hole and I need some help getting out of it. I mean, you have heard people say that. How many ever felt that way? <laughs> you ever get in a rut from time to time? I believe the answer, amen, to get us out of that rut is to start serving. Quit praying about it. Quit begging God to deliver you from fear and anxiety and low energy. And quit listening for your emotions to begin to say, all right, today's the day. Because I'll tell you a little thing I've learned in 45 years of my life is that that's not going to happen. Because your emotions, you may get up one morning feeling all full and energized and feeling good. And, then, and you think, man, this is, this, this is what I was looking for. But do you know what? One day will happen, one night of sleep, you'll go to bed and you'll wake up the next day. And you may not feel that way anymore. You may have been so excited on this, like a, it's like I finally get wired up and ready, Richard. I'm going to start working out. And I feel so good when I hit the gym and I hit it wide open, not knowing and realizing that tomorrow is going to come. 
and I'm going to, if I, and I get in there and I'm acting like I was a teenager and I'm lifting and I'm pushing them, this, that, and the other, running as fast as I can run and doing that because I feel good today. But then it's six weeks before I ever get in the gym again because I have to, I've been the doctor over every pull muscle and over, over all these things that I did in that one day. I got in there and tore myself all the pieces. I was so excited. You can't go by. You can't go by hoping that this day will. Uh, I'm waiting for something to make me feel like doing it. I can't go by feelings. But here's something I've learned is that when you just go ahead and start, if you'll just start, if you'll just put one foot in front of the other and just say, okay, today's the day I'm going to start serving. I'm going, I don't feel like it. I feel sorry today. I feel dark today. I feel depleted today. I feel depressed today. I feel all these feelings. But I'm going to override all that and I'm going to go help somebody. I'm going to hug somebody. I'm going to smile at somebody. I'm going to give something to somebody. Whatever it is. You start doing that and you watch how amazing the thing happens. How stuff starts changing in your life. How you're selfish, quit thinking about you, quit thinking that life is all about you. Listen, God needs for us to look out up at this world that's hurting and realize that we're here to do something for somebody. And then begin to serve. I heard a guy this week, he, he made that statement, it sounds a little rough, but it's really, it's good for people like me, everybody else. How I many needs a good swift kick in the tailgate from time to time? And we all, we all need that, right? Amen. My dad used to take care of that for me. Now, he knew when I needed it. Amen. He'd be glad to oblige it to me. Amen. You need a kick in the tail. Coaches that I used to play for, they would know. Coach Riley, um, he's dead and gone now, but he was very influential in my life. And he, man, he, he wouldn't give me a break. He'd see me. He knew I, had, he knew I was playing back. He knew I was holding back. And he'd jump all over me and he would, man, he'd wire me out. He'd hit me with the, he had a clipboard. He'd throw the clipboard at me, hit me with the clipboard inside the helmet, you know, of, of the, I mean, he would have been fired and uh, you'd never see him again, you know, this day and time. But back in those days, and then coaches, they could, they could kick you and tailgate and it was all right, you know. But, but that's what we need from time to time. We need just a good, swift kick to say, come on, it's time to wake up and realize why you're here, and let's do something about it. You know, shut up and serve. Quit praying about it. Quit, quit wondering what can we do. Quit work. Just, hey, grab hold, find somebody that's doing something, and say, hey, how can I help you? Hey, man, I don't know, I don't, I don't have any time, but I've got $10. Here you go, let me help you. Let me support you. Let me do whatever it is I can do. Let me do something to make a difference. And just let our whole lives begin to be geared that way. Amen. To be servants. We're here to serve. We're here to serve one another. We're here to serve humanity. And to live that life. And it will change your life if you do that. In Matthew 25, I'm closing right here. In Matthew 25, 34 through 40. This is read out of the message translation. And it says this. Then the king will say to those on his right. Enter. You who are blessed by my father. Take what's coming to you in this, in this kingdom. It's been ready for you since the world's foundation. And here's why. I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was homeless and you gave me a room. I was shivering and you gave me clothes. I was sick and you stopped to visit. I was in prison and you came to me. Then those sheep are going to say, Master, what in the world are you talking about? When did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Thirsty and give you a drink. And when did we ever see you sick or in prison and come to you? And then the king will say, I'm telling the solemn truth. 
Whenever you did one of these things to someone who'd been overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it to me. You did it to me. When you start serving with eyes and you everybody you see that others have said they're just an addict, others say they're just a loser, others just say they're don't give those give up. There are ways they're not ever going to make it. When you see that person as Jesus, it'll change your life. It'll change your life. When you see that next person that you come to on the side of the road, and they're asking for help from you, and your your whole countenance changes to the point to where you go, that's Jesus today. That's Jesus today. I'm going to help him. I'm going to, I'm going to love him today. I'm going to love God. How do you want to love God a little more this year? Amen. Start hugging people. Start loving people. Start sharing with people. And then when you're doing that, you're doing it to Jesus. And you're doing it to him. Amen. This world needs for us to start working and start moving that way. Praise God. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me? Service over status. Service over convenience. If you want to love God, start loving.